taken a language class and you found that it didn't work for you either because you started taking it and maybe you got like a week or two into it, maybe you got a day or two into it and you were like, this is just too damn hard. I can't do it. And you stopped, you, maybe you tried something else and it came back or maybe you took an entire language class, an entire semester and you failed it or just didn't do as well as you would have hoped. And you're like, man, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not able to do these language classes? What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with you. But with language classes, there is a reason that they many times don't work for people and myself included, why they haven't worked very well the first time around. And I have gone through my Spanish classes. I went through them twice in high school and in college. First time they didn't work for me, partly because of me and partly because of what I'm going to share with you in today's video. So language classes are designed like a structure for that language for year one, year two, and they're designed to teach you the language through grammatical structures and vocabulary and really a mathematical approach to learning this language. Well, this is very different if you think about how you learned your native language through so much exposure and practice and speaking and listening and just kind of absorption of that language, right? Well, what if we could find a balance between the two? Between having that structure, vocabulary, grammar, and everything that you benefit from in school, like you do you know, in your native language when you go to school in kindergarten, first grade, you go to school and learn some of the structures, but it's not like, here you go, learn all of this in two years, right? And a balance between what we teach in a foreign language class and the exposure that we have to our native language before we start school, and also not having to spend, say, 12 years like we do within our native language, <laughs> learning how to use that language. So a couple things to consider here before we dive into this is that with your native language, you are starting from nothing when you're born, right? You start listening, speaking, and when you go to school, some of us have already some experience with reading and writing, some of us have none, and you're going through and learning how to read and write, as well as learning your native language. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to share English as a native language because it's my native language and what I have experience with. And so going to school for 12 years, practicing English, learning vocabulary, grammar, all the structures, and a lot of time, right? So what we want to do is condense that amount of time and apply the native skills to foreign language. And so my approach to this, what I do is I have like a, an immersion technique that I use for myself before I go into language classes because I do believe that these language classes are really beneficial and I wish that they were designed somewhat like this already to help students who are going into these because so many people I see even in my classes now that I'm taking for like for Chinese for example and they go in and they have no experience and they're like I couldn't imagine going into even a 101 Chinese class and having zero exposure to the language and having to learn that way would just be so difficult. So what I do instead is I created my own practice like <laughs> like preschool essentially. You can think of it like this, <clears throat> like preschool. Before going to language classes, we should have a preschool for language learning. Is what, that's what we need. Preschool for language learning. And as essentially what this is, is just it's the opportunity to practice the language without having the stress and anxiety that is associated with a course. With having to turn in assignments for grades and having to like have things perfect and please excuse my Snoopy back there. Please excuse. Okay. <laughs> but having to practice with that stress of the, like grades hanging over your head, you know? And so what I have designed for myself is the opportunity to practice without the stress. 
and so my preschool for language learning is right now I'm Duolingo I'm using for my Mandarin and I have a tutor that I work with and that's like my way that I get instruction to and not just my own practice and something that is actually really really beneficial for people um, at all levels especially if you need the, the guidance to be like man how am I gonna create something like this I'm not I'm not a teacher like you Sarah how am I gonna do this well working with a tutor is a really nice way to do that and um, I find my tutors on italki it's where all my tutors are right now and um, I use them even with the experience that I have in language learning I still like have <laughs> tutors because they really just it expedite my time and my language learning process and I benefit from it. So that um, is something that is available to everyone at all different levels and if you're like I don't know where to start that's the place to start honestly is with a tutor and that way you can have some of that instruction and then I have like my own practice series and it doesn't look the same every time it doesn't look the same for every language so with my Spanish for example I learned the hard way I went through I did my high school classes and like, okay I'm gonna try again college I jumped into those classes and I did them and I ended up getting a tutor but like a couple of years in and it was to catch up it was like okay I gotta scramble I gotta get this going and fill in gaps and like all that kind of stuff right well, for my French, I started with private classes, a little bit different and um, quite a bit pricier too. They like in-person private classes, but it, at the time that was like seven years ago and there wasn't as much available. There weren't as many resources available and online just like wasn't as much, you know? And, but it worked and it helped and that was something I found for myself to start learning and not have like classes that I had to attend mainly because of my work schedule, but part of how I developed this process and awareness that what we need is language preschool. And so I did that and, and then break for a few years and then over the last couple years, again, I've been studying my French and my Mandarin with tutors for each one. And eventually I did do Duolingo, the whole thing for French. So I'm really, I'm, I really, really like Duolingo. It has helped me a lot. And, and then for, um, Mandarin I have I'm using Duolingo right now and I'm like I'm in the second unit and it's really helping me as well but it's helping me and what I'm doing right now so with my French I finished all of that I did like a lot of practice got myself to a level where I can communicate very roughly in spoken French and now I'm taking a French 101 class in college and this is online it's like community college thing and it's really really easy for me because it's something that I've already practiced. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so I've got study for like seven years and then do that and then before I can even take a class? No. No, you definitely don't uh, have to study that long before doing that. Again, it's about the hours you put into it, not about the years that it takes. For my Mandarin, I started last year and about a year yeah, a little over a year ago. <clears throat> now I'm taking I'm taking simultaneously um, the first French class, first Mandarin class, and for my Mandarin, I'm still working through Duolingo, so I'm overlapping a bit. But Mandarin, it was a little different because I had to take some time to learn how to write characters, learn the different sounds, and it's a little different, right? Uh, than just it's a different because it's in the language of another orthography, and still though. I am moving through that and it's a little bit of a, a juggle right now, but going into it, I feel like going into the class, I feel like I am prepared enough to be able to go back and practice because now it's like going into kindergarten, right? But instead of going in, I'm like, man, I don't know everything. I don't even, I don't know anything. I don't even know my alphabet. I don't know anything. It's like, man, I know a little bit of stuff. Right? I can make some connections and then I can improve the things that I learned on my own and also learn them differently because I've seen that my class and my tutor and my uh, workbooks for Mandarin and Duolingo as a word pieces, um, each of them present the information a little differently. And some of them teach things that the others don't. 
and so I'm able to learn more broadly and really build that foundation. So this is going to be very, very, very strong um, foundation for my Mandarin learning the way that I'm doing this right now. But it took took a long time to develop this strategy and to be able to do it this way. Which is why I'm sharing it all with you today because I want you to be able to learn more quickly and efficiently and productively and so I'm sharing um, what I have learned to be able to get here which is that you don't necessarily have to use Duolingo or a talkie or tutors or classes or this or that but what you do need to do is you need to have your own practice of some kind, you need to have a structure of some kind, and if you are not sure where to begin with that, if you are, yeah, if you don't know, take a course, you know, work with a tutor. If you are in that position where you're unsure and you feel like maybe you're not ready for a course, start with the tutor. That's always the safest bet, is to start with something like that, because, like I mentioned, you know, it alleviates that stress of having to get grades and really like, turn things in, but still gives you that support. If you, if you have ideas about how you want to do it, and you're, you know, the kind of person who is either just very self, very much a self-starter, or if you have already learned a couple languages, you know, you're going into it and you know, and you know who you are already, so you know. And then by all means, you know, take what is helpful for you here and apply that. And, and then for the rest of you guys, uh, start with one of these options and build on it. Start with a tutor, build on it. Start with um, a workbook, build on it. Start with an app, Duolingo if you want, different one if you want. But start with something that is structured and start with something that you can do consistently. So consistency doesn't necessarily mean every day. Although I do try to do my Mandarin every day on dueling a little bit. That is a good goal. But even if I miss a day or two here and there, it's not a big deal. Consistency is through the years of practicing. Consistency is practicing each week through the years. It is weekly, I would say. Yeah. Um, can definitely be daily, but um, I would say weekly, like at the minimum, for languages at least. And having some kind of practice, you know, even with my Spanish now, I have like, I try to make sure I do something with it at least each week, even though I have people who I could speak to in Spanish, like, you know, like my daily interactions, I try to dedicate some time each week to something in Spanish, whether that is an hour speaking with a tutor, or it is reading an article in Spanish, something, so that I do have that consistency, even though it's far less than what I spent on Mandarin or on French. My Most of my time right now is going to Mandarin. I'm spending like a good 15 hours a week, at least on Mandarin, maybe like six, five or six on French, and um, mostly Mandarin right now, so really, really focus on Mandarin, and then with Spanish, maybe like an hour or two, so very little on my Spanish right now. Uh, and, and that's still the other juggle, is if you have multiple languages there. But going back to college courses, because that is the focus of this language, and why they don't work, and how you can make them work for you, is you need to decide. Okay, you can decide if you are the kind of person who can take the class or maybe you have time constraint and you need to take the class right now, build in those pieces you need to be successful. The easiest way to do that is to get a tutor and work with them throughout that. If you don't have that opportunity, one, I would check your school because especially if you're like in the, the US, I know like most of our schools have tutoring readily available to students if you look for it, it's like part of your tuition. And two, um, if you really don't have access to a tutor or maybe your school doesn't offer that, then, and you can't afford it, find a language partner that's something that's free, find ways to supplement like Duolingo or other apps where you can practice and practice and practice and have that. And you just have to put in the hours. If you, you either have the tutoring option or you put in the hours. And 
that is, you know, if you need to get that class done, you need to go there, you need to get it, because sometimes we're in that position. And if you have the luxury of doing preschool <laughs> for your class, then what you can do is create that container, that environment that we talked about it for within this whole video of any of those pieces, right? And that is my take on college classes and how you can make them work for you. Please let me know if you have any questions, like anything you want to know more about, if you have a specific situation or scenario or something, I would love to help you guys out. Let me know in the comments down below. And, oh, and there's a blog post. Make sure to check that out too. And then next Tuesday, I'll be back with another video. See you guys later.